Russian President Vladimir Putin has put into trial operation the new ultramodern Vostok station at the South Pole in Antarctica via video conference. This project is of critical global importance. The wintering complex of Vostok Station is the first modern building in the world built at the Earth's cold pole. Antarctica, a continent located in the very south of our planet, is washed by the Atlantic, Indian, and Pacific Oceans. Antarctica is currently the only unpopulated and undeveloped continent on Earth. According to the Antarctica Convention, signed on December 1, 1959 and entered into force on June 23, 1961, Antarctica does not belong to any state. Only scientific activities are authorized. Of all the states working in Antarctica today, Russia has the largest representation, 10 stations, 5 year-round, and 5 seasonal. Most are located on the coast, and Vostok is the only station that is located in the center of the continent and is close to the southern geomagnetic pole of the Earth. What is the uniqueness of technical solutions of the Vostok Station project? A team from Ukraine worked on the project. Highly qualified design engineers who were able to successfully implement it within six months in a 24 by 7. They faced a difficult task to design the cladding contour in such a way as to exclude snow ingress inside the station structure, including air gaps. To achieve this, a strip is provided at all seams to ensure that the panels are joined together airtight. Bracket frame connections were specifically designed to allow for system reach in excess of 550 millimeters and in fragments in 1,000 millimeters, maintaining the reliability of fastening at low temperatures. The walls of the station are a complex system of insulation. Each individual perimeter module is insulated from the inside with several layers of mineral wool insulation, filling all the voids in the module structure and a single insulation on the outside of all blocks. There are four layers of insulation on the side walls and roof. On the bottom, eight layers of mineral wool insulation. The total thickness of the outer walls reaches 1.5 millimeters, 650 millimeters. All of this is attached using special studs. The roof and side walls of the Vostok station modules bear distinctive marks that express the general idea of the stations belonging to the scientific community of the Russian Federation. Labor-intensive work was faced not only by the design team, but also by the employees of the Craspin factory, where multicolor, complex applications of symbols, emblems, and inscriptions were produced. One of the most complex symbols code of arms of the Russian Federation is made in the form of multi-layer applique and consists of many tiny details and exactly corresponds to the image of the approved state symbol. To achieve perfect clarity of reproduction and exact fit of the elements of the symbols on the territory of the Russian Krabs factory full-size models were cut in the dense cardboard imitating aluminum composite panel with the help of chip machines. And only after complete fit they started manufacturing elements from aluminum panel Craspin composite L. All applications were produced on Craspin's own production lines in Russia. Let's move on to the modules, what they are, and what functions they perform. Module A is energy center number one. The technical block includes six storage tanks, diesel fuel, emergency generator, and pumping station. Module B living quarters. Module C is a modern medical block with operating room, bare camera, dental, and x-ray rooms. State room with billiards and movie room. Gym and sauna. Module D Power Center Number 2 The technical block consists of six storage tanks, diesel fuel, emergency generator room, pumping station, as well as three cold and two heat insulation warehouses. Module E Energy Melting Station, Backup Station, and Garage Preliminary assembly of the Vostok Station modules was carried out in Gachina at the experimental plant of building structures from May to August 2020. The screening took place on August 27, 2020. The complex was fully assembled and all life support systems were brought into operation. Polar explorers worked and lived in this complex for several days, thus testing all life support systems, after which the complex was disassembled, packed accordingly, and prepared for shipment. How was the construction of the station going? In Antarctica. The modules themselves were brought to the shore of Antarctica by the ship Kate Dezhnyov, Yuroslav the Wise, Captain Klebnikov, and Andrei Osipov. Later, during the sledge caterpillar trek, the modules were transported from Progress Station to the assembly site to the east. On the prepared foundation, the builders installed 36 supports of the stations with a height of 3 meters using Archelli Abinet's crane. They allow the wintering complex to remain uncovered by snow for many years. As noted at the time by the Ministers of Natural Resources and Ecology of Russia Alexander Kozlov, the total weight of the structure delivered to Antarctica reaches 6.8 thousand tons. 
The length of the complex, 140 meters. It's 13.5 meters wide. The maximum height is 17.5 meters. The total area of the premises is 1,911 square meters. The station's vital activity is ensured by four diesel generators of 200 kilowatts each. Two more standby generators are located separately from the plant. In the future, several types of solar panels are planned to be tested that can be used during the four-month-long polar day. In the future, the station may have a solar power plant. The sequel follows. New energy-saving technologies were applied in the design of the wintering complex. In particular, the exhaust gas and diesel heat recovery system warms the air for space heating. In turn, ventilation includes a recuperator, which heats the air entering the station at the expense of the air already exhausted. At the same time, the station's hull is wrapped in mineral wool insulation up to 95 centimeters thick, and the facade is made of composite panels resistant to extreme frosts. The new station is designed to comfortably accommodate up to 15 people during the wintering period and up to 35 people when the expedition works there. All systems are double or triple redundant to ensure personnel safety. The new wintering complex, Vostok, will significantly change life and living conditions. The comfort of the stay will certainly increase many times over. In this case, winterization will be similar to staying on an orbital station. The feel of the space will change, there will be lots of light and modern equipment. Many household processes will be autonomous, automated. Life at the new station will have a positive impact on the emotional state of polar explorers. In addition, the internet and cell phone connections allow you to communicate freely with your family and friends. Now all stations also have television with Russian channels. All this allows polar explorers to feel less disconnected from home and the rest of the world. The complex itself was built with private business funds from Novatech, whose head Leonid Michelson volunteered to help out back in 2017. Vladimir Putin at the opening of the station noted, to quote, until recently, conditions at the station were very modest, ascetic, one could say, far from the modern level of comfort. The last major renovation was here over 40 years ago. The first structures, as far as I know, are already buried under snow long ago, and even the slightly later ones are partially or completely submerged up to five meters of snow. Now the situation has changed. The station's capabilities have increased by an order of magnitude. Today, it is one of the most modern and well-equipped in Antarctica, emphasized Vladimir Putin. Putin. Recall, Vostok Station was founded in 1957 on the ice dome of Antarctica at an altitude of almost 3.5 thousand meters. Living conditions at the station are considered to be among the toughest at the South Pole. The average temperature is minus 35 degrees Celsius in summer and minus 66 degrees Celsius in winter. At the same time, in July 1983, the absolute temperature record of the planet minus 89.2 degrees Celsius was recorded there. The station was remodeled in 1974 and 1982. However, by the late 2010s, it became apparent that the complex needed to be replaced. The oldest structures have long been under a thick layer of snow, while the more modern ones have been partially or completely submerged in snow to a depth of up to 5 meters. It takes about two weeks to adapt to living on a station like this. With severe dizziness, choking, joint pain, muscle pain, lack of appetite, sleep and loss of weight up to several pounds. And yes, just wearing a warm hat and coat in such a cold weather is not going to survive. And don't forget that from April to August there is also polar night. Plus extremely low oxygen content and very dry air. To live here, as our president said, is simply a true feat. One of the tasks of the station will be the study of the sublithic Lake Vostok. This lake is analogous to the sublit seas on the planets and moons of the solar system. This project can noticeably enrich not only the scientific but also the technological base. In 2012, our scientists successfully conducted the first autopsy of the sublithic Lake Vostok. It became a real sensation in the scientific world. A technology is being developed to penetrate the lake, which could be used to analyze the lake without disturbing its unique natural environment. Antarctica's oldest ice will help reveal the reasons for the rearrangement of the climate system that occurred on Earth about one million years ago. We will be able to develop an understanding of the role of greenhouse gases and global climate change due to both natural causes and human activity. Analyzing past climate changes will allow us to calculate how life on the planet may evolve over the next millennia. In addition, space dust is periodically collected at Vostok Station. In a normal meteorite fall to Earth, its material is heated, all the organics on it burns, but in the case of falling microparticles up to 5 microns in size, their organics do not have time to heat up to complete combustion, so they could harbor traces of hypothetical extraterrestrial life. A number of other scientific activities are also possible on the basis of the station. 
It is partially carried out even today, for example, on observations of events in the magnetosphere and ionosphere. Commissioning of a new wintering complex at the Antarctic station Vostok will allow Russia to maintain its leading position in the study of the icy continent. Anyway, well done. Such a great another victory for our great country.